Hi, I'm Bill and welcome to Happy Vending and today we're going to fix up this Dixie Narco Vend Motor. Happy Vending. So if you watched my video from a month ago, I changed out this Vend Motor from my Dixie Narco 276E machine with a brand new one because this vend motor was sometimes stopping and not completing the vend. I suspected it was this switch, but I didn't have a new switch at the time, so I just put a completely new motor in and took this one out. Today, I'm going to fix up this motor and then reinstall it in the machine and take out one of the other ones to use as a backup motor. Now one of the most common problems with these VEN motors when they go bad is this little micro switch here which falls into the cam and actually stops the, the uh, rotor from, from spinning. The reason these go bad is there's only about six volts DC that goes through this switch from the control board and when the contacts in here start to corrode a little bit, the full voltage doesn't get through the switch. So they typically need to be replaced and they're not very expensive. I ordered this bag of them right from Crane, four of them, and they were only about $5 a switch. The part number on these for the 276E is 1011192. We're gonna take out this switch. There's only two Phillips screws in this. So I got my little Phillips screwdriver. Put some force on that. Take this out. It's really not worth it to me to take these switches apart and try to clean the contacts. I mean, for $5 a switch, just put a new switch in there. Don't play around with that. Now the sold out switches on the same machine, Crane doesn't make them anymore. So sometimes with those, you do have to try to clean them and get them to work, unless you can find some second hand switches. So here we go, we got the bad switch. Simply get one of my new switches, different color, but it's the same exact switch. Line it up. Put my screws in. I don't tighten them both until I get both of them in there. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to do to fix this. The second thing that sometimes goes bad with these um, motors is the brake over here. Sometimes this gets all gummed up from syrup, from cans that popped open getting on this. And what that does is it, it gets in these contacts here on the brake and the brake doesn't stop the rotor at the exact uh, spot. And sometimes the rotor coasts a little bit and causes a double bend. Now this one, honestly, I'm looking at it, it really doesn't seem too gummed up, but I'm just gonna clean it anyhow and, and show you what you would do. Now, um, a good way to clean these is you use contact cleaner, you know, that spray that they used to sell at Radio Shack, but you can still get them from electronics places, electronic supply places. But if you don't have any of that, which I didn't bring any with me, you can simply just use some Windex to clean these out. Once again, you're just trying to clean out any of the syrup or goo that might have built up in there, both on this part of it here, this little white part that comes down, or this brass part, which contacts with the motor here. So I'm just gonna simply spray in those two spots. And some over here, get a clean rag and just wipe in there. And 
You see a little bit of dirt on there, but not, not too much. So this little part here sometimes gets some goo on it. So spray that down, spin it and clean off any dirt that you see on there. Sometimes I push my rag in there just to get some areas that are hard to get to. Get all the little grooves and crevices on that. Just want to get your rag in there and make sure you're getting all the Windex off and cleaning away any dirt. Make sure it's good and dry before you put it back in. I mean, the only other parts on here are the cam, which is fine. The cam is what you adjust for how many products deep you have in the column. And then the actual motor itself. And these motors usually last a good long time. They're heavy duty motors. And this one, honestly, it's probably fine. I would bet that it was this switch that was causing the motor to stop. Just wasn't sending the current through, but that's replaced now. So I'm just gonna go throw it in the machine, test it a couple times, make sure it's good. and. Then I'll keep the motor that was in there that I, you know, replace this one with as a backup motor. I always like to keep one complete backup motor with me for a quick swap out. If I ever have a column that's not working right and I don't have time to troubleshoot or replace a lot of parts or clean out parts like this. I just swap it out and then do this type of work later. I put the fixed up motor in slot one here, column one. You can tell this is the fixed up motor because of the dark colored switch. The one that was in here had one of the white switches on it. This motor originally came from the last column over here, the seventh column. This bends bottles too deep the first column vents cans three deep, so the cam was in the wrong setting. So I had to adjust that cam to the one slot, it was in the two slot. If you ever have to adjust a cam, all you have to do is pull out this tab and then spin it into whatever hole it needs to go. It was in two, I needed to make it go into one. So it properly bends these cans three deep, has three open notches as opposed to two open notches like it did in the seventh column. So I'm gonna bend it a couple times. It's gonna drop a couple cans. Hopefully they don't fall and explode. That's always the worst. All right, that was one successful bend. Missed that one, it came out quick, but luckily it didn't explode. Oh, I caught that one. That was the products falling down into the rotor. Oh, let's try it one more time. Seems to be stopping good seems to be switching properly. I would say this motor is 100% again. Well, there we go. We have a properly rehabilitated motor. If you want to see how to actually swap out the motor, watch the other video where I swapped out this one here in the seventh column. It's basically pretty easy. You just have three screws, three Phillips screws. You undo them and the thing basically comes out. Disconnect the wires and put them on there, of course, while the power is turned off. Well, hopefully you learned something today, and as always, happy vending.